Hello, everybody, and um, welcome to this Monday Daily Devotional where we're continuing to walk through uh, a gospel primer by Milton Vincent. And today we're looking at reason number five that we should uh, rehearse the gospel daily or preach the gospel to ourselves every day. Remember, the gospel is the good news about what God has done through Jesus Christ to save sinners. It's about the incarnation, the Son of God becoming a man. It's about his perfect life. It's about his substitutionary death for sinners. It's about his powerful and glorious resurrection. And it's about his ascension to the right hand of the Father. And so it's about what Christ has done on our behalf. And let's listen to reason number five, that it's important we preach the gospel to ourselves every day. And this one's titled, Transformed by Glory. All right, so follow this. The glory of God is the most powerful agent of transformation available to mankind. It is so powerful that it transforms those who merely gaze upon it. The Apostle Paul gives personal testimony concerning this stunning fact. This is quoting from 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. But we all, he says, beholding as in a mirror... The glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So I'm going to read uh, the verse right before that, chapter 2 Corinthians 3.17 and verse 18 again. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, so he's talking to Christians, we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord. So we're looking at the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So this is saying that, that the, the Spirit of God transforms us from one degree to another to become more and more like Jesus, like the glory of Jesus. And the way this happens, it says, he says, is we're being transformed as we behold the glory of the Lord, as we look at God's glory. Uh, there's this book called Beholding is Becoming. Uh, the, the way One of the ways I put it is, uh, or another author has put it, is you are what you worship. The more time you spend looking and enjoying and beholding and delighting in God and his glory, the more you end up looking like him. Milton Vincent goes on, From Paul's testimony, I learned that if I wish to become all that God wants me to be, I must behold him. His glory each day. All right, now the question is, but where do I find God's glory to behold? Indeed, the glory of God is revealed through all of creation. And so here um, he's talking about like Psalm 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, right? And uh, Or Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So one thing I'd recommend you do if you want to behold the glory of the Lord is to go outside and spend some time in nature, spend some time um, at, in the evening looking up at the moon, uh, looking at the stars, uh, enjoying seeing the trees, enjoying God's creativity and God's uh, just creative work. And all of that is pointing us away from kind of the beauty and the glory of the creation to the one who made it. The heavens are declaring that God is glorious. So uh, the glory of God is revealed through all of creation, but the Bible indicates that outside of heaven, the glory of God in its thickest density dwells inside the gospel. It is for this reason that the gospel is described in scripture as, quote, the gospel of the glory of Christ. So it's the good news of the glory of Christ and, quote, the gospel of the glory of the blessed God. Consequently, as I habitually gaze upon the glory of the Lord revealed in the gospel, I can know that actual deposits of God's very glory are attaching themselves to my person and transforming me from one level of glory to another. This transformation is deep and abiding and unfadingly displays the glory of God to others. Okay, so... The glory of God is found in the gospel. And you see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, where it says, it's talking about people, Paul saying, we preach the gospel to people, which is the glory of God, but some people are blinded to it. So listen, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in their case, the God of this world 
has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So Satan keeps you from seeing. What does he keep them from seeing? The light of the gospel. The light that shines out from the good news of Jesus, the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So Satan tries to blind people from seeing how glorious uh, Jesus Christ is, which is displayed in what he has done in the gospel. Verse 6. This is what happens when somebody is saved. Verse 6. For God who said, let sh light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So what happens when you're saved is God opens the eyes of your heart to see the light of of the knowledge. You have to know something. That's why we preach the truth, the content of the gospel to ourselves, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Where do we find that? In the face of Jesus Christ. So every day we need to look at Jesus. Every day we need to look at what Jesus has done. Every day we need to remind ourselves of some aspect of how Jesus has worked in history to save sinners. And as we look at Jesus in his gospel, um, we see the glory of God. And as we see the glory of God, we're transformed to become more like him. So this week, let's keep dwelling on the gospel. Keep reading the gospel primer. If you have it, looking at all the verses that are quoted there. Or just spend time maybe reading Colossians slowly, which is, tells us all about the glory of Jesus. All right.